I really enjoy making blueprint designs and I drew this one in Affinity Photo. It took me about 10 minutes. Now this may look complicated and if you're a beginner in Affinity Photo, this is a nice easy walkthrough to show you exactly how you can make blueprint photos like this and you can hang them on your wall and enjoy them for years to come. Let's jump in. Now if you've never heard of Affinity Photo before, it's a lot like Photoshop and it's a one and done. And what I mean by that is that you just buy it once and then you own it forever. There's no subscription. You don't need to pay every month. So you can use PSD files. So if you've already been using Photoshop, it takes a little bit of a learning curve to learn Affinity Photo, but overall I'm really enjoying it. I'll put links to where I'm getting these files in the video description below. One website that I like to use is called, is called Drawing Database. And here you can see there's a whole bunch of tank blueprints. There's also fighter craft, gliders, helicopters. There's lots of vehicles. I'll just pop open military here really quickly. And we can see there's a whole bunch of different tanks and things like that. So this is a tank blueprint. And then you can just download this. There's battleships. There's all sorts of cool things on here. Another th uh, website that I like using is called PNG Tree and PNG tree, I just typed in white grid and I got back a bunch of grid that are PNGs, which are great because that means that the background is transparent. Okay, let's have some fun in Affinity Photo. And before we get started, I just want to mention, as I set up my palette here, I'm going to go File and then New. And I'm just going to go over here to Page Width and I'm going to make it 1500 by 1000 tall. I just want to point out there is more than one way to do things in Affinity Photo. And so if you're screaming into the computer, that's not the right way to do it. There is more than one way to do it. And this is a tutorial designed for complete beginners. So I'm trying to select the easiest way that makes sense to people, maybe that have used Photoshop in the past. But again, there's more than one way to do it. So here's my dots per inch 300, page width 1500, page height 1000. Again, you can make this larger or smaller depending on what you're trying to create. Now for my document, I've got a white background. If you don't want a white background, you can simply make it transparent by going up to document and then transparent background. And now we can see we have a transparent background. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to put in the background images first. And I like to get that sort of organized before I import the actual design that I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to go file and then place and I'm going to select my background. And for my background, I'm just selecting a metal plate that I grabbed online. And so I'm just going to move this in and I'm, I'm just moving with a mouse and it's just making it larger or smaller. So I'm just going to make that so that it kind of fits. And I think that looks pretty good. I might make it just a tiny bit smaller. There we go. And I can move this around now inside of the palette. So that's going to be my metallic texture. Then I'm going to insert a pixel layer. So I'm over here on the layers panel and I'm going to select new layer. And then from here, I'm just going to select like a blue color for my blueprint. I'll go over here to my fill, which is my little paint bucket, and I'm going to select the fill button. So now I've got a blue and then underneath it, I've got the texture. Now for this blue, I can select like multiply, for example, or darken. I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just selecting the layer and I'm going to layers and I can now select darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and I can make all sorts of cool effects just with these two images. I've just got blue and I've just got this metallic. So that's what I'm going to start using there. And then I'm going to go file and place and I'm going to select a grid that I've got. And again, I just grabbed this online. So this is just like, I just typed in like PDF grid and then I can rotate it. Now, if you want to rotate it exactly 90 degrees, I'm going to go right up to the top and I'm going to hover over this little white node and I'm going to hold down the shift key and that like locks it. So I can do, whoops, so I can do exactly 90 degrees. So I can put it right to there. Now I can just move this around as needed and I'll just make this a bit bigger and I'll just put this right in the middle. I'll zoom out and this will be my grid that I'm going to be using. Now, if you want the grid to be less pronounced, then when you're on the grid layer, you can just change the opacity. So I'm just going to drag this opacity down to like 25. So now it's just kind of a neat looking background there 
it's not necessarily like right in your face. Okay, so now we've got this template. And if you're creating these for sale, for example, I would recommend saving this now as a template because then every time you import a new image, you're already halfway done because you've already got yourself a nice looking background. Now I'm going to import my picture. So I'm gonna go File, Place, and I'm going to be importing my tank picture. My tank picture is actually a JPEG file, and that could be a problem because what that means is the background is white. So what do we do now to get rid of that white background? Hmm. Okay, so we can go up to Layer and Invert, and that will now give us a white tank, but the background is black. Hmm. So how do we get rid of the black background? Well, there's a couple options. We can go here now to the layer that we're in and we can select off of this styles panel. We can select, for example, multiply or color burn. Sometimes that works if the whole picture is the size of what we want. So like that's a pretty good one. Lighten, for example, you can't really tell that there's an actual background attached to that tank. So if you're looking for a quick, easy fix, that would work. And then I would just go here to the eraser tool and I could just erase this. I'll just select the layer, of course, and I'll just erase that. So that looks pretty decent, right? You could use that. But if you really, really want to get rid of the black background, because maybe you're working on it and you don't want to just have that one adjustment, what you can do is remove all of the black. Now, how do you do that? Hmm. Well, if I use the regular eraser tool, as I, you can see, as I hover over, I'm just deleting everything off the picture. That's not what I want. So I'm gonna to go to the background erase brush and I'm going to hover over it and you can see it's starting to erase the black now, but it won't necessarily erase the tank and it won't necessarily erase the inside of the tank and that can be a problem. The reason for this is because I've got this little tiny checkbox up here in the top right called contiguous and what contiguous means is it's looking for anything that's in and of itself. So this whole piece outside of the tank is one piece of black. But inside the tank, you'll notice it's not trying to delete it until I go inside the tank. Now it will delete the inside, but not the outside. So continuous looks for borders. So I'm going to remove the continuous option. I'll just make my little brush a bit bigger. And now I can just simply remove all of it. It's just going to go nuts in here and it's going to remove everything. It doesn't matter if it's inside the tank, if it's outside the tank, and I'm just going to remove it all. So now I've truly removed the black because I unchecked that little contiguous button. Now, if I want to change the color of my background, let's say, for example, I don't like the blue. Maybe it looks a little too metallic. It's pretty easy to do. I'm in the color palette right here, and I can just simply move this around, and maybe I want to have it you know, purple, for example. Then I go here to the paintbrush tool, or the paint fill tool rather, and I can just click in here and that will change it. So you can make this blue as light or as dark as you like. If you do something really light, for example, you know, you can make some really nice effects, especially with the metallic background. I personally like a dark blue, so that's what I'm gonna use here. So this is gonna be my dark blue background. Now that's pretty much it. So from there, what you can do is you can also monkey around with the brightness and the contrast of the actual tank picture itself. So I'm going to just remove the metallic layer just so we can see this a bit easier. And I'm going to remove the grids just so we can see this a bit easier. So here's my tank picture. Now from here, I can change the brightness on it and it's called contrast, brightness and contrast. There's a little adjustment bar right here and I can scroll on down and I can see there's all these different, all these different um, types of adjustments. And the one that I want is called brightness and contrast. Now, if I select anything in here, it's going to open up a slider. Just be aware that if you use brightness and contrast, it's going to affect everything in the photo. It's not going to affect just that one layer. So you might want to do this. You might want to make it as bright as possible and up the contrast as much as possible. And then you can say, okay, great, I'll do that. And then you would simply go back to the layers and then you could affect the layer now down below. I could make this darker, for example, and then I could fill it. So I could do that. I could make this really dark if I wanted. And now that looks like a good looking blueprint. I'll just add in my metal 
I'll add in my background. And so it's really just a matter of monkeying around with the picture and monkeying around with the different colors. See, now I've got it too dark, so I'm going to go up above, and then I'll make this a little bit better, uh, bluer. Maybe I'll make it a bit lower. There we go. So we're kind of back to where we were before. So I've really got it pronounced, and part of it is because I'm working in a video so you guys can see it easier. But what I'd probably do is dull this out a little bit more, and I'd make this a little bit uh, less stark, something like that maybe, maybe even darker. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I've got a blueprint design. And then from there, I could simply add in text. And so we'll do that right now. So adding text is extremely easy in Affinity Photo. Right down here on the left-hand side, there's a little text tool. It says Artistic Text Tool, and I'm just going to click it. And then from here, I can just simply select my text, and I can start typing. So I'm going to type in, you know, Tank Blueprint. I'll select it all with Control A, and I'll just make the text white because we couldn't see it because it was black by default. My text design sitting there. I'm just going to move this up to the top so I can see it easily. And now I'm just going to move this around. Now I can make this larger. I can make this smaller. I can just move it really easily. I don't really need to monkey around with the font size. It's very graphical, which is nice. So I've got it selected there. I'm just going to go up to Tank Blueprint which is my text, and I'm just going to move this over here. And now I hate the word tank blueprint, so I'm just going to select it again. So I'm selecting my text tool, and I'm just going to call it what it is, which is my German Panzer. And then I'm going to move my text down here to the bottom. Now, if you want to change the actual text, it's pretty easy to do. The text is sitting here on the top left. And so I can simply just move through all the different texts that I've got, and it will change how it looks. So I've got a whole bunch of different texts on my computer. I've got a million billion texts on here. So what I'm going to do is just scroll on down to something that I think looks good. So I'm going to use, for example, Futura, and I'll use Futura Mid, and that'll be it here. And now I just simply select my, Ger my German Panzer text, and I can put it right here down at the bottom. It's even giving me a little bit of a line there that says if I'm aligned properly, which is nice. It says right there I'm aligned, and I can now put that down at the bottom. If I want to move my actual German Panzer, I can also just move that along the line as well. If I move too far, it'll tell me. So I can just move it back. When I see that green line, you can see that I'm aligned. And there you go. So I hope you found that helpful. Pretty straightforward design here on a German tank. And you know, to export, it's pretty easy. You just go File, Export, and then you can basically save it as a JPEG file. And then you can sell this as a digital print. You can sell this as a, you know, a JPEG. You can print it even at the local Staples store or Walmart photo store and hang it on your wall. So I hope you found that helpful. Affinity Photo is really fun. And what I really like about Affinity Photo is the layers panel and the adjustments panel. You can go through and you can make things look different very easily just by clicking a button. So you can have some fun in there. I like that one actually looks better. So I might keep it like that then. So anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. The adjustment panel is great. Click the like if you found it helpful. And here's another video that I love about Affinity Photo. Hopefully you find that entertaining too. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.